Welcome, my name is Krista Hanks and I'm a graduate student at Angelo State University. And today I will be presenting my problem in practice regarding the graduation rates of pregnant and parenting students. For the past four years, I have worked on an alternative high school campus that targets at-risk students, including teen parents. Currently, teen moms and dads make up around 13% of our student population. To serve these students effectively, our school is committed to employing programs and services that will support this unique population to meet their goal of high school graduation through our Parent Education Program, or PEP. While I've experienced firsthand the services that are designed to increase graduation rates of these teens, the question of how other campuses, districts, and states all over the country respond to the needs of adolescent parents remains. Research shows a decline in teen pregnancies over the past 20 years. However, the number of pregnant adolescents in the United States is greater than any other industrialized nation across the world. Addressing high rates of pregnancy goes beyond being just a national issue, as statistics show that Texas ranks fifth in the nation for teen pregnancies with 41 for every 1,000 births. Teen parents face challenges with childcare, finances, housing, and healthcare, all of which impact their success in high school settings and beyond. Data also suggests that many teen parents face barriers in aspects of their social and emotional growth that will impact their scholastic performance. These issues, among others, have contributed to a wide discrepancy in the graduation rates of teen parents and their peers, making this an issue educators need to address in schools everywhere. Historically, graduation rates for pregnant and parenting teens have fallen short of the rates of their non-parenting peers as far back as researchers have collected data. Thankfully, these trends have influenced lawmakers to take action over the past 50 years, beginning with the educational amendments of the Civil Rights or Title IX, which was enacted in 1972. Prior to this time, few national regulations existed to protect the educational rights of pregnant teens. The lack of directives led to most schools either expelling their pregnant mothers or at the very least forcing them into the mainstream forcing them out of mainstream schooling to alternative classes where they offered subpar education and were essentially hidden from their peers. In fact, a 1970 study of 17,000 school districts found that only one third of the schools offered any type of, type of education to parenting teens. But between 1969 and 1971, two court rulings made way for some changes to be made to begin ensuring the rights of these teens. First, the case of Perry versus Granada Municipal Separate School District in 1969 found that expelling unmarried mothers was a violation of the 14th Amendment. However, readmittance to schools was still left up to the student school board. Next, Ordway versus Hargraves in 1971 stated that segregation of pregnant students was unconstitutional. This ruling allowed the decision to return to the school to be the student's choice. These decisions, decisions paved the way for President Nixon to sign Title IX into law. The amendment stated that in order for organizations and institutions to receive federal funding, they would be unable to display sexual discrimination in any educational setting. It also offered clear regulations for providing an equitable education to pregnant and parenting teens by classifying pregnancy similarly to other temporary disabilities. This allowed for services like an approved leave of absence, home-based learning, and transportation to be provided to pregnant and mothering students. After the passage of Title IX, attendance rates of pregnant teens increased by 23 percentage points and the dropout rate trends fell. While positive changes came from the passage of Title IX, the National Women's Law Center stated, pregnant and parenting students' chances of success are harmed by a lack of support from their schools. Active discouragement by school personnel, outright discrimination and stigmatization and inferior alternative programs. Problems such as these led to the passage of the Pregnant and Parenting Students Access to Education Act, or H.R. 5894, in 2009. This act provided funds to schools which would allow them to more fully fulfill the requirements of Title IX, including child care and transportation grants, and efforts to destigmatize pregnancy in schools. Even with the positive changes in regulations over the past 50 years, statistics show that pregnant and parenting teens are three to four times more likely to drop out of high school, and less than half of all teen parents will graduate by the time they are 20 years old. 
Further, by the age of 30, only 2% will complete college. In interviews performed by Mary Erdmans, teen moms shared the struggles of being a pregnant and parenting student. These moms voiced their frustrations about rigid bathroom re regulations, uncomfortable seating options, and unwavering teacher expectations that illustrate the need for additional support and intervention programs aimed to help pregnant and parenting teens succeed in school. After looking at current research on the topic of parenting students, the problem I wish to address is the large percentage of pregnant and parenting teens that do not graduate from high school. The deficit created by dropping out of school extends beyond their educational outcomes, creating lifelong challenges for the student and their child. The purpose of the study is to educate faculty in high schools on the impact of potential interventions that could encourage pregnant and parenting students to complete their high school degree. To fulfill this purpose, a quantitative study is proposed to explore the relationship between existing comprehensive in-school parent education programs and high school graduation rates. The independent variable will be defined as the presence of a parenting education program in a school, and the dependent variable will be defined as the overall graduation rate of students in the program. Thank you for your time and interest in researching solutions for our nation's teen parenting students. And if you're interested in learning more about teen pregnancy and high school success, please reference the following sources.